Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome to all of you in our new lecture, that is lecture 11. My dear students, hope that you people are fine, sound and safe in the current COVID-19 pandemic. My dear students, hope that you people are enjoying the best part of your life. Dear students, today we will, in this lecture, we will try to cover many topics and will try our best to finish this chapter. So let's start without any delay. The first topic is the centriome. The centriome is composed of microtubules. Now what are microtubules? Microtubules are the tubular structures made of a protein called tubulin. Tubulin. These are the long cylindrical shapes. If each centriole consists of two, cent the two centrioles are present and this the, with the centrioles always at hand, the pair of centrioles is called centrosome. It is very important to keep in mind that pair of centrioles is called centrosome and they are present in, a, in an area making a, which is called centrosphere. So centrosphere actually represents centrosome. If we want to study its internal structure, my dear students, they have nine triplets which are arranged So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine triplets, nine sets of tubules they have, and each set of tubules have three tubules, micro tubules. So nine multiplied by three, two to twenty-seven tubules are there in the central structure. Now its composition is clear, it is made up of microtubule and tubulin protein is the and in the cytoskeleton inshallah we will discuss the structure of the microtubules also. Now let's come to the function. First function is spindle fiber, the spindle of the rectus formation during segregation. My dear students, <coughs> this is the function of the centriole, which usually they perform during the cell division, this is a chromosome, and this is the central mirror of the chromosome. So, what happened there during, and these are the spin, centrioles which forming the spindle fibers, and and these spindle fibers are actually the tubulin subunits which assembly in a line and making a straight fiber and due to attachment of this chromosome on its centromere having an, another structure called gynecopore with the help of gynecopore they attach with the spindle fiber and then with the pulling factor in mitosis they usually longitudinally this chromosome divide and half move to one more and half move to another more. So both in mitosis and meiosis, the spindle apparatus is very important. Second is the cilia and flagella formation. But one thing I want to create 
that few students uh, in, in the mind of few students who are very talented this question must arise that sir in plants and higher plant cells there is no there is no centrioles so how they spend the fibers found in the these higher plants it means that the role of the spindle fiber formation is not only confined with the centrioles. This is clear. Now, second is the cilia and flagella formation. Cilia and flagella formation. Cilia and flagella are the locomotory organ which we are discussing in this lecture. The next part is cilia and flagella, which are locomotory organs in unicellular organism. In higher plants which have no centrioles, still a spindle fiber is found. It means that if centrioles are not present, it, it proves that if centrioles are not present, still, still uh, the spindle fibers can be found. So this is somewhat a little bit controversial, but you have to write it uh, in the exam that spindle fibers formation is a function of the centrioles. Now let's come to another one. This is cilia and flagella. Cilia is actually uh, means small here, like eyelashes, hair-like projection, and flagella are white. And they both are locomotory organs in unicellular organism. About the <coughs> cilia, I will say cilia are present in the respiratory system also, and they help to prevent. Uh, to block the dust particles uh, to get into, into the respiratory system. But it is also a locomotory organ. Locomotory organ, it helps in the locomotion. If we study the structure of the some unicellular organism like Paramecium cardator we have, on the body of Paramecium cardator there are many minute like structures present. And these minute structures are called cilia. And flagella is also locomotory organ, like uh, this is Clamidomonas, and they have two flagella. And by these uh, flagella, they usually move. The difference uh, internal structure of both. Flagella and cilia is the same. But the main difference is the flagella are few in number and they are always larger in size and cilia are minute and they are abundant in number. If we come to its internal structure, this is a long tube which have a basal body. The internal structure of the basal body consists of the microtubules. The 9 plus 1 element is here. 9 plus 1, what does it mean? There are 3, three tubules at the periphery and 1 tubule at the center. This is the structure of the basal body. Now, if we talk about the rest of the structure, so it's the long cylinder of microtubule which is called as exonema. This exonema or exonema consists of a series of tubules which are doublets. These doublets are nine. These are triplets in the basal body and these are doublets, nine doublets which are paired and present at the periphery and two tubules which are unfused. These are unfused central tubules. That's why this arrangement is also called nine plus two arrangement. This is nine plus one this is 9 plus 2. 9 plus 2 means 9 doublets in the periphery and 2 unpaired tubules at the center. And these unpaired tubules are also surrounded by a membrane or sheet. And this is the whole structure. If we, this is a cross section. This is a cross section we got. And this long cylinder is called axon. Now, this doublet, this microtubule doublet having 
uh, two types of tubule. One is external, one is internal. One is incomplete tubule and one is complete tubule. Oh, and there are some proteins which are present here called dianine. This is their tablet, okay? This is their tablet. This is another tablet. They are close to one another. So what happens that when energy is given, these dianine bend. These dianine bend. Right? And which allow them to move. If we talk about the movement mechanism, so the dianine proteins bend these tubules and contract and relax. There are total nine uh, doublets we have. And first is effective stroke. Effective stroke means that they contract. When they contract, then after that, these four tubules bring them to recovery. Recovery stroke means they move to the opposite pole. So contraction, effective stroke, recovery stroke, effective stroke, recovery stroke. Effect. So five, five doublets are involved in the effective stroke and four out of nine are involved in the recovery stroke. And same is in flagella. Beating stroke, recovery stroke, or effective stroke, recovery stroke. Effect, this is also called beating stroke. Effective stroke, recovery stroke, effective stroke, and recovery stroke, and they are keep moving there. The bodies of the unicellular organism in aquatic medium. So, my dear students, it was all about centrioles, cilia, and flagella. Now, let's start the microtribune and uh, cytoskeleton in which we will study microtribune, microfilament and intermediate filament and their structures. So let's start. Dear students, the next we have the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a combination of two words. Cyto means cell and skeleton means the frame. So this is a set of fiber structures distributed in the cytoplasm. This is the nucleus, this is cell membrane and this is the cytoplasm in which they are scattered. Usually they are of three types. Microfilaments, microtubules and intermediate filaments. First, microfilament. These are the actin filaments. Actin is a protein, and these actin subunits consist of globular structure called G-actin, which are helical in manner, and they twist around F-actin or fibrous actin. Along with that, we have this blue color. If you you can see this blue color is another type of protein called tropomyces. Upon the tropomyces, uh, upon the actin subunits, there is another triplet type of structures present, three, three subunits, that are called tropomyces. The size is seven nanometer in diameter. They are present just below the plasma membrane and its function is that they have the ability of contraction and relaxation so cyclosis, which is the movement of cytoplasm, a uh, stream movement we discussed uh, earlier, that cyclosis is a movement in which cytoplasm moves around the nucleus. This cyclosis is brought about by the contraction and relaxation of microfilament. Along with that, in muscle cells also actin filaments are present and, and, and there they are called myofibers because in, in muscles, myosin, another type of protein, filaments associated with the team which make our muscular structures. So they have great uh, ability of contraction and relaxation which is important and this contraction and relaxation move in the cytoplasm constantly. It's like a motor. 
Second one is the microtubules. These are tubulin subunits, and two subunits are present. One is called alpha and beta. Tubulin is a protein, and its diameter is 25 nanometer, means more than the uh, microfilaments. If you see these red are the alpha and blue are the beta, they are arranged in such a way that alpha, beta, alpha, beta. And their function is cilia and flagella are made up of microtubule. Earlier we discussed centrosome, centrifugal structure is also uh, made up of the microtubules, spindle apparatus, microtubules, subunits, I told you. So, very important function it also has. The next one is intermediate filament. The intermediate filament consists of the three helical uh, chains, and these helical chains are made up of another protein which is called YBT, and the size is 8 to 10 nanometer, means more than microfilament and less than microtubule. And their main function, uh, they are scattered and make it a network in such a way that they provide mechanical support to the cell. So it's all about the cytoskeleton. Uh, my dear students, our next uh, topic is nucleus. Uh, so let's start the nucleus after which we will discuss the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell and then bacterial cell. We will discuss inshallah. So stay with us in this lecture. <coughs> Dear students, the next is the circle part of the cell, nucleus, which controls all the activities of the cell. Usually it is composed of protein, lipids, and DNA. Their structure, nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, chrom chromosomes, and nucleus. One by one, we will discuss. First of all, I am coming towards the nuclear membrane. So, the nuclear membrane is also a live form protein in nature, but the main difference between the plasma membrane and the nuclear membrane is that the, the nuclear membrane is double membrane and the plasma membrane is single membrane. And after that, they have pores. The second difference is they have pores where nuclear protein or nuclear pore complex is present, where different materials can get out and then inside the cell, especially messenger RNA moving. The space between the two nuclei is called perinuclear space. And in, inside the nucleus, there is a dark skin body which is called a nucleolus. This is a dark skin body which appear in the interface and disappear in the cell division. Usually, the ribosomes are constructed in the nucleolus region. I want to clarify one thing to my students that it is not the way that we say that there is cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, there are nucleus, nuclear membrane, and in the nuclear membrane, nucleolus and nucleolus have a membrane. No, not at all. Nucleus is not, uh, don't have any kind of membrane. It's not membrane body. It's a dark cell body. It may be greater in number, one, two, three. And uh, usually when the chromatin material condense, uh, accumulate in an area that make a dark cell body, that is called nucleus region. Chromosome. First, what is chromatin? Chromatin are uncondensed from long, long fibers. They are not there. When they condense, they convert into chromosome. Chromosome is mainly composed of the DNA and protein. DNA is 45% and 55% is a protein called histone. If we study the structure of the chromosome, so this is a four-arm chromosome having two chromatids. If we study this one, its top most part is called telomere. Then we have a con the central constriction, and this constriction is called centromere, this is called primary constriction. Along with that, they have a special type of protein on the side, kinetochore, with the help of kinetochore, they get attached themselves with spectral fiber during 
the uh, metaphase of the cell division. This is called the secondary constriction and above the secondary constriction there is a satellite part called, uh, which is also called a junk DNA. Here the DNA, why this is called junk DNA because they have no functional gene here. That's why this is called junk, junk DNA. Satellite region is also called junk, contain junk DNA. Junk DNA having no reasonable genes for the expression. This is called secondary constriction and two more regions. One is a dark strain, heterochromatin, and one is light strain or loosely paired cardiochromatin. The most functional genes are present in the U chromatin. It is present in U chromatin. By this student, stenomere have a great role in the aging. How? Just like you have a pencil, you you have a sharpener and you sharp your pencil and the pencil length decrease with passage of time. Just like that with the division, too much division, the length of the telomere reduced and when the telomere is reduced too much then the cell is not able to divide further more. That's why we get aging with the passage of time. So telomere and a great role in the aging. If we come to the function of the nucleus, nucleus is controlling all the cellular functions. How? It has chromosomes and chromosomes have DNA and DNA has genes and genes making messenger RNA, messenger RNA having the information which goes outside the cytoplasm and, and, and on the ribosome it's making the protein and these proteins are enzymes and these enzymes are performing particular function. So in that way nucleus is the commander which is controlling all the cellular activities. So it's just, it is the control center of all cellular activities. Dear students, it was all about the nucleus and the chromosome in our next and final topic is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell and then bacterial cell we will discuss and it will be the finishing one. So please stay with me. Dear students, now let's differentiate between prokaryotes and eukaryotes and prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Dear students, a prokaryotic cell having leg to nucleus, pro mean early karyote and bronchitis mean nucleus. When the leg to nucleus membrane bonded nucleus is absent, all membrane bonded organisms, all mitochondria, Golgi bodies, ectoplasm, reticulum, all membrane bonded organisms are absent here. Ribosomes are small and 70 years ribosomes are present. Cell wall is made up of murine. Murine is actually a peptide you like here. And no meiosis and mitosis mean no proper cell division is present. My dear students, the example is bacteria. Cyanobacteria, Archaea, these are the examples of prokaryotes. While eukaryotes have all membrane bonded organisms, two nucleuses, present and ribosomes are there. Cell wall is made up of cellulose or chitin. Chitin may be uh, present in fungi only. Neosis mitosis is present in normal cells uh, the examples. But this is a bacterial cell, if you see this is a flagellum having a capsule and after capsule cell wall, cell wall membrane murine and plasma membrane. Plasma membrane have sometimes uh, the pockets like structure and these pockets like structures are called mesosomes. The 
outside we have thread like proteins called P, which is made up of pilin protein and which help them in the conjugation process. Plasma membrane have the pockets, mesosome we discussed. Along with it, it has a DNA, a single DNA, all of the bacteria are haploid, meaning a single DNA they have, which no proteins are associated with us. This nuclei you can consider it as a chromosome, although it's not a chromosome because chromosome is made for protein and DNA and we are only DNA, but it can do all the activities, so this is called nucleoid. Another uh, additional circle, uh, circular pieces of DNA we have, which is called plasmid, which play a vital role in the, uh, we use them for the genetic engineering. And they have some antibiotic resistance genes which protect them from the effect of antibiotic. A lot of them different inclusions are present like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids. Bacterial cell division mainly occur through binary fission normally and um, multiple fission also sometimes. Along with that, sexual reproduction can be occurred through conjugation. These are a method of cell division in bacteria. So, my dear students, it was all about today. With this uh, final topic, we finish the uh, chapter 1. Inshallah, we will start chapter 2 in the next lectures. Hope that you people uh, got good understanding of uh, today what we uh, discussed, explained. Um, if still if you have any problem you can ask me. Thank you so much. Stay and home. Stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.